Hello. Are you Con? Are you Conrad? I am. Are you Olivia? I am. How did you, uh... Hold on, let me read this letter one more time. You're his son? Um, in ways. Not by blood. He, um... Him and my mother were together before she died. Uh huh. And, um. At the time, he was practically a father to me until, uh. He disappeared. And then I got a telegram from him a week or so ago. Maybe two weeks by now. I don't know. Yeah, it's been about two weeks. I'm guessing. I've lost track of time and from the context of these telegrams I would assume that he is um, no longer with us <sighs> no well um, when he sent me a telegram he also attached a message to give to you Mm -hmm. because you are not um, able to be there with him. I've been beating myself every day for it. Would you like me to read this message to you? <sighs> yes, please. Well then here, I'm gonna get it in my notes. <clears throat> you ready? Guess I'll ever be. Isis, I'm sorry you were receiving this letter this way. I'm sorry I couldn't tell this to you in person. If you're receiving this message, it's because I'm gone. I have been sick for a while. I think you know that. When we talked that night on Shady Bell, I could see in your eyes that you realized I was already gone. I'm sorry I couldn't have been stronger for you. Jed is without us now. And that's okay. Well, as much as I would like to say that's okay, I would be lying to myself. I have sat here ever since we got to the Five Territories feeling like an outcast of my own family. Jed's actions were the last straw for me. I told you back at Shady Bell that I don't trust myself being alone. I'm not in my right mind anymore, Ollie. I know that. I'm not going to sit here and bring danger upon the group. And most importantly, you. If I know you at all, I know you're probably beating yourself up over not being here in my last moments. I would like to make one last request of you. Don't. I am glad that you weren't here to see what I've become. At the time of writing this, I've killed two innocent prison guards. I'm already gone. I was gone whenever I came to the ranch that last day I saw you. There is nothing you could have done to save me, Ollie. Please do not spend your days blaming yourself for my actions. Instead, remember me for who I was. Do not mourn over me. Rejoice that I am finally at peace. When you look at the sunset as you're herding cattle, think of me. When you walk through Valentine, think of us talking as you held the reins of a beautiful horse. Remember the good times, because whenever I was with you, I was happy. I need you to be at peace, just as I am now. For I may be gone physically, but I will never lead your side spiritually. You are the only one who ever believed in me. To me, you were the sister I never had. The sister I didn't know I wanted. The sister I didn't know I needed. And I wrote a poem for you. And then the young poem says, As the sun sets today, know that I am here to stay. I may not be here physically. You may not be able to see me. But I am here in your heart, as you were always in mine. We did not need to share blood to be family. 
You are my sister through and through. This will forevermore be true. Um, finally, I would like to—I would like you to meet my son, Wolfheart. He is not mine by blood, but he is my son nevertheless. Treat him as your own, as I know you would have done if he was legitimately mine. He is strong and fierce, just as I was. Watch over him. Protect him. Save him from turning into me. His mother and I will be reunited soon. I love you, Ollie. I will see you again someday. Until then, I will walk by your side to the end of your days. Be safe. Your brother, Murdoch. P.S. I am handing down midnight to you. You're the only other person he likes. <laughs> yeah, goddamn horrors. It just hurts. I know. It hurt for a long time after I lost my mother. Choose to be at peace. And this is what you must do for him. I'm just happy he's at peace now. Grief can do detrimental things to a man. And I believe he was at grief for a long time. After my mother had passed the way she died so savagely. I went to go visit his grave the other day. I need to visit there before I leave. I can't stay for her very long. I have to go um, settle some things that I'm already tied to back home. But then I would like to move down here and watch over you for him. If you do go down there, please be safe. There aren't very good people down there. But I don't want to get you wrapped up into that right now. Maybe I'll go visit another time. That probably would be best. You seem to love you an awful lot there, Ollie. <laughs> it's amazing. I... I didn't expect to... Fall for someone so hard, brother wise. I guess that's what happens when you truly love somebody. <laughs> love is what makes this world go round. Unfortunately, anger grief and all the other emotions I have to step in and try to ruin everything they often do I believe it was a combination of things I know um, the time that I knew Alistair he was um, whenever I saw him he was always happy and smiling but also very um, conflicted whenever he met my mother. 
he didn't want to be a part of the army anymore because he saw the kind of things they were doing to my people. That's what I saw in him. I always saw the good. Yes, there was bad things, but I never saw him for that. He was a good man. Even with losing his mind, he was still a good man. I can only judge him off the person that I knew, and he was good then, too. Now, I can only imagine the pain he must have felt because he saw he was there whenever my mother was slaughtered. I was not. I got away before that. I was taken away. And would never looked back. But I, I would have imagine. loved to. Yeah. I could only imagine the pain that he felt then. I would have loved to have met your mother. I'm sure she was a beautiful woman. <laughs> Her name was the Comis. Which means <sighs> um daughter of the moon. That's beautiful. She's very unique, actually, because, um, she, the Maho tribe had dark hair like mine, but her hair was a glowing white, almost. That's where she got her name from. My people used to say that she was, um, that she came from the moon itself. Honestly, I'm sure she did with how you describe her. She's the only reason that I, uh, still roam the earth these days. To make her proud and to become a man that she would want me to be. And so whenever I got these letters, even though I was not personally tied to Alistair anymore, I knew that my mother would want me to bring these letters to you. I'm happy you did. I've been... Putting on face, pretty much. For everyone. Being smiley. Trying to make sure everybody's okay. Trying to live my day, but... It was hard. It still is. But I know he wouldn't want me to be in my feelings 24-7. You sound like, from what knowledge I've gathered on my time here about Alistair, you sound like, um, well, you sound like him. Don't become him. It's okay to feel. It's fine. But I think where he went wrong was he couldn't accept things. He felt he put himself responsible for anything that ever happened to him. I know from his days in the army that after my mother died that he left, he deserted his men. He might not think he was being followed and monitored, but he was. Oh, I know that feeling. Being followed and sensing being followed is not not a good feeling to have. Mm -hmm. 
He had a good intuition, though. On everything. So I've heard. <sighs> Part of me wishes I had more qualities like him. But, uh... We are not related by blood. So... I'm not sure if I have any of those kind of qualities that he has. <sighs> well, I don't know you, but... And I know you're not related by blood, but... <sighs> Just your sense about you, you, you are like him. Comforting boys. Reassuring. He was always like that. I remember when there would be a thunderstorm. We would just be sitting in my mother's uh, TP tent, kind of like that one. Mm -hmm. And he'd sit there, he'd have his arm around her, and his other arm around me. He didn't have to say anything. It was his breathing. His breathing was very calm. But he would still say that this too shall pass every time there is a storm. Yep, that's definitely him. I don't know what exactly led to him. Um, losing his mind. But I can only imagine him putting other people first and not focusing on his own feelings. Well, that is important. It can get um, to the point where you start losing yourself and you start forgetting or not realizing the things you need as a person. If you know what I mean. I do. So I'm not saying that you don't need to care about your friends because you do, and I'm sure that is one of the best qualities about you. I could tell you are very... I, I, I could see why he loved you so much. But you also need to worry about yourself too. <sighs> I just... It is okay I to feel. I didn't know that he was going to fully lose his mind. I just, with everything that happened, I had to leave. I had to leave county. I had to go back to my other home to see if my parents were okay. Hmm. And then when I came back, I was told. But I didn't have time to grieve. I had to bucker up, move on with my life. And I've been trying. This is the first time that I've actually sat down and sobbed over him. I can sit down with you as long as you'd like. Or we can go on the trail and just see the scenery. I don't have a horse, though. <laughs> I wish I could give you one, but I do not have any horses. It's okay. It's whatever you like to do. I am here right now to make sure you are okay. Because that is what my um, father would want it. Probably just gonna sit down here if that's all right. Mm -hmm. 
I apologize for my rugged appearance. I've uh, been traveling a lot to get here. You are perfectly fine. <laughs> In the letter, he said that he would be here with with me spiritually, and I do believe that. Before I I left his grave, a robin landed on it. Not a robin, sorry, a cardinal. <laughs> and I truly believe that was him. They say, um, Cardinals are people who have moved on from this world coming back to visit their loved ones. And from what I gather out of everybody that he knew, I believe he loved you the most. He was a good brother. I was the only child, so having someone like that in my life was one of the best things that could have happened to me. And I am so grateful that I met him. I believe in many ways you have probably saved his life more than once. I think whatever this Jed fella did was just too much. And I think he is probably past the point of helping. From what I gather from the telegram that he sent me and the one that he sent you that, um, I don't think he was actually not in his right mind when he sent those. I think he knew what he wanted to do, and I think he was at peace with that decision. Usually when people have come to that point, they usually are. There's, they made the decision. They aren't going back. And there's nothing you can do to stop them from doing it. Mm -hmm. This, um... Alice, girl that he had fought, that my I'm trying to get used to it again father was with, was she a good woman? Is she a good woman? She's a very good woman she I don't like talking about him around her cause I know she'll be upset because she doesn't know how to handle it she has mixed feelings about everything. And I just... I... She's... I love her to death. Mm -hmm. And I don't... I'm not angry with her. I mean, things happen the way they happen. But sometimes I wish she would just sometimes come to terms with it. 
But again, that's not my place. Mm -hmm. She'll have to come to terms with everything on her own due time. She'll have to grieve in her own due time. Yes. Everybody needs to grieve. I think that may have been what drove my father to what he became because he never took time to grieve. I think he was so angry at the world that he never sat down and accepted the fact that my mother was gone. Would you like me to read the telegram he sent me? Sorry. Uh, yes, please. <clears throat> I have this one from memory because I've read it multiple times. Boy, it's Alistair. I am sorry that I abandoned you. The grief of your mother dying messed with my head. And anything that reminded me of her was too painful to bear. I am writing to you now because I will probably be dead soon. If you want to know anything about me, come west and find Olivia Green. She's the only one who truly knew me. Believe her. Believe everything she says about me. No one else. She was a sister to me, and she will be an aunt to you. Be safe. I may have forgotten, but you have always been in my heart. Alistair Murdoch. believe every word in that letter. If you ever need anything, do not hesitate to contact me. I won't. Aunt Ollie. <laughs> You could just call me Ollie. Aunt Ollie's kind of hard to say. Yeah. Yeah, I think I might stick with just Ollie. Yeah. The same goes for you. If you need anything. You can just let me know. I'll, I'll make sure to give you my telegram number before I head out. But... I will stay as long as you want me to. I was given another name to uh, try to um, track down for him, but I don't know where he is. Uh, who's that? His name is um, Nico. Oh, Nico. Another brother to me. I swear to God, if I lose him, <laughs> I know I'm not, but. Hmm. From what I gather from his letter, it's, uh, he's a very strong, very strong individual. Oh, yeah. Apparently, this used to live with my father. They would. Seeing them, you wouldn't think that they were friends, but they were. Nico gave Murdoch a hard time all the time, but he loved him. Nico just wanted to make sure Murdoch had the best. Even though it didn't seem like it. I think a lot of the feelings my father may have had towards the end was all just being paranoid feeling like the world was against him because these bad things would keep happening to him and he made I mean I may be stretching it here but I'm sure he made decisions that he regretted 
he was a very um uh, how can I say this? How do you say this? Um he wore his heart on his sleeve a lot. He was a very um emotional guy. He cared a lot. Almost too much. He did care. Do you want to know that promise he made my mother when he was in the army? I would love to know. I mean, if you have any questions about the time he was in the army, you just let me know from what I, I can tell you from what I know. He made a promise to my mother that he would never kill another Native American after meeting her. He even changed his complete, um, I don't know how they call it, his job, basically, in the army. He was just a soldier, but then he chose to study to be a field medic after he met my mother. And I think that decision of becoming a field medic was one of the biggest regrets of his life because if he would have been a, still a soldier he would have been made aware that the plans the army was making to attack my village tribe I'm the last surviving member of my tribe I'm so sorry such is life. I had my time to be angry. Oh, I... need you both. When you go, he passed. I was sad, but more so angry with him. Because he made that decision without you. Or without you being here. I know I wouldn't have been able to change anything. If anything, it probably would have put me to a trip to the hospital, too. From the way he was writing in the telegrams, whatever he was planning on doing, I don't think was going to follow through with them. I think he planned on doing some, something so drastic that it would get him killed. My father loved you, so therefore I shall equally love you and call you my own. So I have to go later on, I have to go back to my homeland and finish up some things. And then I will come back and I would like to live here close to you. Well, I'll be here. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> there is... 
a person. His name is Dakota. Hmm. Um, he's trying to get natives back up to the reservation so they can thrive up there. And we're trying to help him do so. Helping him with whatever he needs. And I'm sure he would be more than welcome. Open arms. With you joining. And you'd still be around me. Because I go up there. Every so often. Mm -hmm. But that is all up to you. It's not something to be pressured to do. I think you would be nice to be a part of a tribe again. For the longest time ever since everything happened, I felt like I have been cursed to walk these plains land alone but whenever I got that telegram from my father I saw that the uh, I don't know I think I was maybe destined to wait to find a family again until there was one out there for me uh. All I am is I'm happy you sent me the telegram when you did because I was close to a breakdown. Like, full-fledged breakdown. Thinking about leaving again. Hmm. But I'm glad I didn't. Did, um, did my father ever sing? He sang all the time. <laughs> His voice, he would always say that he didn't know how to sing. But told him that it didn't matter what people thought about it. His voice was soothing. I remember whenever <laughs> uh, I remember whenever he first um, met my mother. As you can imagine, the rest of the tribe were not very um they were not very pleased about it. Seeing as he would come over in his army uniform because he was doing this in secret. I remember he got tired of all the stares that he was getting every time he was over, so one night he brought his guitar <laughs> and he sat at our fire, just like we are. And just started to play. At first, the, the, the rest of the tribe was very confused. They were just like, why is this white man at our fire singing a song? And then they just... They kind of think they realized he wasn't leaving, so they just joined and joined they just, at the fire. <laughs> they just accepted it. Mm -hmm. He always used to sing this this song called Wayfaring Stranger. That's what he'd always used to sing. Yep. I think a lot of the times he used that singing and playing of instruments as a way to um, 
kind of let things go. Everything that he would have pent up inside of him, he would use music as a way to express himself and let it all go. Yep. I think somewhere along the way after my mother had passed, he forgot to enjoy the music again. I wish he had. Enjoy started enjoying it more again. I hope. Thinking. Sorry, huh? go ahead. No, you go ahead first. Mine is not. It's more of a uh, one last jab at him. <laughs> um, I was just going to say, I hope this message that he has t was tasked to give me, or he tasked me to give to you, has helped you. That's the way he intended. I don't at least. Honestly has the weight has been lifted. It's been so heavy on my chest for what feels like years, but I know it hasn't been years. Hmm. I think he just wanted you to know that he was not he did not forget about you. I think in a lot of ways he chose to do what he did to protect you and the rest of the people that he surrounded himself with. He was a very, he said he had really good intuition. I think he was very aware of his mind and his mental state. I think he was very aware of what was happening to him towards the end. I do too. I... He said I tried to... Ignore it. I tried to think. Maybe, hey, he'll get better. He'll snap out of this, but... In the back of my head, I knew he wasn't going to. He was too far gone. Did you realize that when he talked to you at the Shady Bell place that he had mentioned? Yep. I... I could see it in his eyes. He was... He was already gone. He just wanted peace. He was the type of man to carry the weight of the world on his shoulders and he would do it badly for the people around him but eventually doing that will crumble you and you will crumble under the weight of it all. That's why I am stressing to you that is important to find balance in protecting the people around you and caring for them and loving them, but also caring for yourself and loving yourself. Because if you do not do those things, you will end up like my father and no longer be there for the people that you love. <sighs> I've been struggling with that, but I'm going to work my damnedest 
I'm being better about it. For him. For you. For Alice, for Jed. For everyone I care for. But mainly for him. That is what he would have wanted. I think he realized that as long as he continued down the path he was on, he was just going to end up putting everybody he cared about in danger. I think he got so far... He let it go so far, his, his grief, that there was no, there was no coming back from it. I think it caused irreparable damage. Heartbreak and pain can make somebody lose their mind very quickly. Without them realizing it. You're not alone, Bobby. You are not the only one feeling this pain. It hurts still, but... Like I said, I'm... Not talking about it just hurt makes it hurt worse, but talking about it... Lifts some of that heaviness. Like I've said, I, I had my time of anger. Whenever I found out what had happened to my mother, I went on a warpath to find the man that led the charge. My people ambushed a group of soldiers along the road. And one of the men was the guy who led the charge. And I sat there. I had put an arrow into his shoulder, and he had fallen off of his horse. And he sat there on the ground, looking up at me as if I was a monster. You were just defending what was yours. Hmm. Like anybody, anyone would have done. Hmm. See, I... I sat there and I had my tomahawk in hand ready to strike him. But the way he looked at me, the fear 
in his eyes. I hesitated. And I let him get away. And I realized what good does it do to avenge a loved one if it is going to turn you into a monster yourself. What does that do in the long run? It'll just be a continued cycle. <sighs> I wish that I would have looked back and tried to find him and not listen to my other tribe members who took me away from there before everything went down. I could have saved him, I feel. And this also I struggled with for a long time. But then I remembered what he would say to me during those storms. This too shall pass. This feeling that you feel, Ali, shall pass. Do not focus on this pain for too long, because it will eat you alive like it did him. I just wish he would have went by his own words sooner. try my best. Like I said, for him. I wish he would have known, though, one thing. What's that? The horse I had, um, when I first met him, I wasn't able to keep that horse. I was able to get him back recently and I know he would have been ecstatic to know because he knew how much I loved that horse and how distraught I was that I had to give him up I'm sure he would have been over the moon happy for you My father always loved art, and he loved his family, just friends. Sometimes he would love too hard, but he always loved others more than himself. Sometimes I wish he would love himself just as hard. But you can't change the past. Hmm. Best thing to do is move forward. Think about the positive things that happened while he was still here. 
think about the good times. I know that's what he would have wanted for everyone to do. Not be remembered as someone who was so angry with everything. Not someone who thought that every one in the world was out to get him. <sighs> he was a good man. And I'm going to keep saying that until my dying breath. I believe that you were a huge part into making him the man that he was. Oh. Sorry, I need to stretch my legs a bit. Um. I'll gladly take credit in that. <laughs> Have to give that give him that last sass. <laughs> I'm sure wherever he it is spiritually, he is laughing. And grinning from ear to ear. Seeing us together right now. His two families from two different periods of his life. I'm sure he would be groaning at me right now. Um, beat that, beat that man in many horse races. He always said I cheated. He always said everybody cheated. He <laughs> challenged everybody in my tribe to a horse race. <laughs> and he always lost every single time. He was too stubborn and bullheaded to take any advice. But how to be better at horse races. I think he won once. But I think my horse, Cowboy, was making it so that he did win. My horse was not listening to me that day. <laughs> and I think Cowboy knew. I think he was like, Okay, Mom. Let this man win for once. <laughs> you can only do so much to hurt his pride. <laughs> he was a very prideful man. <laughs> yep. Something that I admired gun, about him. Hmm? It's a very good with the gun, though. <laughs> he taught a lot of my people how to shoot guns. <sighs> I always worried about him when he went out on bounty hunts. Well, he's a bad <sighs> Yeah. I hate the <sighs> a bunch of the family are bounty hunters and I don't like it at all. <sighs> but it's their life. They can choose what they want to do. It's not it's not a safe safe job to have. I'm sensing a storm coming. And yeah, me too. I will probably need to part ways 
when the storm comes. So as not to be trapped in it for too long. But I will give you my telegram number and you can contact me. Anytime. Please do. Yes, I will. Most definitely. You definitely pick a pretty camp spot. It's a great view. Hmm. To be honest, I don't have a horse, and I took a train to Valentine, and I didn't feel like walking very far. <laughs> That's very fair. Well, you still picked a good spot. This is pretty country around here. As much as he hated it in this area, I wish he would be able to see it one last time. The telegram I got was from Valentine Station, so maybe he did spend his last days here. <sighs> as much as I love the Blackwater Plains, because it reminds me of back home, the green over here is just so much more beautiful. It's nice to get away. It's been a while since I've actually just come out and sit in the nature. After I got, after I moved past everything that happened, I felt it was my duty to be a middleman for the army and the other native tribes to try to ensure peace negotiations were successful and to make sure my people didn't get mistreated. Well, that you is seem a like the perfect person to do. Oh, I bet. <laughs> that is very tiresome dealing with white man greed. But. I would I've rather. Greed. I would rather my people I... survive than be wiped out from this land. <sighs> yep. I. I've seen the greed of these five states and. I don't want anything to do with it. The people would just get over themselves and realize it's not helping anyone. It's like I said, what's the point of fighting for something if it is going to turn you into a monster and a grateful person and probably end up getting you killed? What's the point of fighting for it? Yep. Words if you were going to, to die by. trying. And I realize there's not a lot of people who have this mindset. But I have seen too much destruction and unneeded death that have come at the expense of pride and greed. I'd like to go one week without somebody dying hmm. that I've either closely known or have met several times. A person that I somewhat knew, but took me on as me being their sister, passed away the other night. I am so and sorry I to just... hear that. Oh, 
I mean, nothing that I could have done anything to stop it. Okay. His name was Darius. Apparently he was kidnapped and died trying to fight his way out. At least that's what his son told Nico. Hmm. And I didn't even know he had a son. <laughs> well, until today you didn't know my father had a son. No, everybody has kids, apparently. <laughs> well, like I said, mine's not by blood, so... But he might as well have been. It doesn't matter if your blood family is family. I consider you my family now, because my father considered you his. <sighs> and I will look after you to the end of my days to honor him. Appreciate that. Also, you look after yourself too. Like I said, I will be here for you no matter what. Might be hard to believe, but I am only 23 years old. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a little, I wasn't the baby whenever, or a little child whenever Alistair met my mother. But he was still like a father to me. Yeah, he had that aura around him. Very comforting one. Someone you can just talk to, even if you don't know him. Hmm. Same aura that you have. I don't know you, but I spilled my heart out to you. I do pride myself on being a good listener. That's a good skill to have. The skill that you need to do when you're in the middle of peace treaties. Yeah. <laughs> it's... Quite ironic how easy peace treaties are when both sides actually listen to each other. It's weird how that works. Yeah. You don't know how much better I feel. Like, my sadness is still there, but... It's not heart-wrenching like it was before. I am glad I have been able to do something to bring peace. Although it was his words, not mine. I just traveled over here to give them to you. You don't know how grateful I am for you traveling this far. I think Without that a was horse, a... no less. Well, I took a boat and a train. Because it was quicker. Still. Yeah. Much as I hate those things. Yeah, I'm not a fan of them either. Um, but I think that was his plan. Because he could have easily just sent you the telegram. But he, I think, wanted to... Introduce us to each other. I'm happy he made that decision. I think he wanted to leave some part of him with you. Like I said, will we not 
probably may not be of related by blood and I don't have any thing genetic of him with me. I still have the impression that he put that he laid upon me is with me. Piece of him is <laughs> like I said, even not blood, you're you are so much like him. Thank you. I'll give you my telegram over here before I forget. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I would say I'd give you mine, but you have mine. <laughs> Stone. Oh. oh no, that's important. There we go. Hmm. My. I wrote it down. In case there's any confusion about my name, which there typically is. My native name is Maiko, which means wolf. And you said then, it's Maiko? Mm -hmm. But in English, my, my first and last name transfers, translates to wolf art. I love but, that. Mm -hmm. But... White men don't like to call me that because they think it's, it's they just think it's stupid so well they're stupid <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> oh you don't have to tell me so I told them they could call me Conrad I will call you whatever you want me to call you you may call me Maiko. I'd like that. As far as you telling the rest of the people that he was with about me, I don't particularly care if you do. Just um, tell them not to go looking for me. I have one purpose that I'm here for, and that is to protect you, to make sure you are okay. I don't much care for the rest of the group. I think I'll hold off just for now. Hmm. At least until I'm actually around permanently. There are still peace negotiations that I need to go back and finish up and hope no hostilities have happened since I've been gone. Please make sure you keep yourself safe. Hmm. Alright. This is not goodbye, Ollie Green, because I will see you soon. In the meantime, oh, shoot. My father will be watching over you. <laughs> 